Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, we are doing a D'Angelo Russell traded rebuild to the Minnesota Timberwolves. So ever since he's joined the Golden State Warriors, I've been hearing nothing about how he's not going to be part of the long-term plans in the franchise within the Golden State Warriors. Now, that being said, I do know the, uh, I believe it was the GM or the owner of the team, did say, you know, we are going to keep D'Lo for the long term. Of course, he's going to say that, guys. Like, he's not going to tell his all-star guard, oh, no, man, you're, you're, you're just like a, like a six-month rental or something like that. We're going to trade you by the trade deadline. Like, that would not happen, right? So, I mean, in my opinion, uh, the talk is cheap. If he ends up, you know, not really fitting into the chemistry of the franchise, or they just find that maybe Clay Thompson at small four doesn't work out when he comes back from his injury, and, or maybe just D'Lo does not really mesh well with uh, Stephen Curry, I could totally see him being traded to a different team. And that team that I've been hearing about is the Minnesota Timberwolves. A lot of us actually wanted to see him go to that team originally, but of course, you know, we all got shocked by when they did a sign trade for Kevin Durant to the Brooklyn Nets, you know what I'm saying, man? So yeah, uh, for today's video, we are going to do a D-Lo rebuild. If you guys do me a quick favor and please drop a like on this video, guys. We are at the end of the NBA 2K19 cycle, so it really does help support the channel this time of year when you drop those likes on there, man. So I do appreciate that very much. So, so yeah. The uh, trade, the trade that I did, and I think it was, I think it was a pretty fair trade based off the circumstance. I think it kind of gives the uh, Golden State Warriors, you know, something that they have lost as of recent. And I'll explain myself in a second here, guys. So yes, the trade that I did: Robert Covington, Jeff Teague, two first round picks. You might be able to argue one first round pick, depending on who you're talking to, in exchange for D'Angelo Russell and a toss and player. The reason I did this trade for the Golden State Warriors is because. Robert Covington, in my opinion, could be like the new Andre Iguodala of that team. You know what I'm saying, man? Just like the guy that comes in the game or really starts at the game too, man, at the small forward position. Gives you great defense, can knock down that three-point shot. Like he instantly replaces what Iggy did on that team now that he's no longer part of the franchise. Uh, Jeff Teague, who, you know, is a fine point guard, but I see him being like the new Sean Livingston of this team. Just a really nice veteran point guard that comes in the clutch. And uh, you just know he's going to run that second unit with ease. I feel like that's a great fit for him at this point in his NBA career. And, of course, the draft picks. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they do get an all-star point guard who would go back to his natural point guard position in D'Angelo Russell teaming up with Carl Anthony Towns. Now, I, I kind of, like, debated on trading Wiggins instead of Robert Covington, but I did think about it. I do think the Warriors would actually prefer to have Robert Covington in this case. Uh, just because Wiggins, high volume shooter, not the most efficient guy, just does not really seem to fit that mold of Golden State Warrior basketball. So we are going to have Andrew Wiggins for this rebuild. Now, that, with that being said, if our team's not finding success, please believe I could see myself training Wiggins at some point during this video, guys. But yes, uh, right now the team's looking like this. We got D'Lo at point guard, Jared Culver. That's like our backcourt for the next decade, if you ask me. Wiggins at the three spot. Power forward position, extremely, extremely weak. We currently have uh, Keta Bates' Jop right there. And, like, yeah, he's definitely not, like, my like my long-term solution. Uh, we got Carl Anthony Towns. We got Deang. Shabazz Napier's fine. Noah Vonley, who I would probably actually start at the power forward position. Um, you look at his stats right here, guys. I remember him being more like an offensive-oriented guy. 6'9", 250 pounds, so definitely can get up and down the court. Um, but, yeah, but shooting stats are, you know, decent enough. Nice driving dunk with a 70 overall. Uh, as far as rebounding goes, 87 defensive rebounding. That's actually really nice. And he's got an on-ball defense of 58. Yeah, his defense um, is kind of where he lacks at. And that would kind of hurt the team going forward, man. Just because, like, I, I mean, Carlton Thomas does, like, fine enough. But I don't want to do, like, any crazy trades this first season because I do want to see just how, um, you know, D'Lo would operate with this squad out there. So I'm not going to do any trades like that. Now, one guy that I do actually want to toss into the G League is going to be my man out here, uh, Nas Reed. Like, this guy right here, I still feel like he could just be, like, the optimal power forward here in the NBA. So, he is going to go to the uh, Iowa Wolves with the hopes of eventually, I don't know if that would be the starter in this video, but definitely a very solid player. And then, uh, Bates Jop, I don't, honestly don't know too much about his game here, man. I know he was drafting, what was it, uh, yeah, round two pick number 18 back in 2018. He might be a solid player. Uh, defensively, it would be nice if he kind of, like, got there as a dude, but... I mean, it looks like he, yeah, defense consistency is a 35. So not a really great defensive player. So I don't really think I want to, like, invest into him too much there, man. Um, of course, you got Jordan Bell who can play the center position. Yeah, being 6'9", I see him more as a center in this era of basketball than I do a power forward. Like, I could put him at that four spot and start over Vonley, but I'm fine with Vonley. Um, and then you got Josh. I'm going to call him Josh Joe. Josh Joe, man, just because I always butcher this man's last name. Okoj. Okoj. Is that how you say it? I don't know, man. Okoj. <laughs> Okoj. Regardless, he'll be part of the team probably for the foreseeable future. Uh, but as of right now, probably in a backup role. So, yes, we're going to go with this for our starting five this season. 
Do I think this is a playoff team? I'm not quite sure. Probably not, man. Like, I could see them potentially sneaking into the eighth spot with D'Lo now at the point guard position. But that's about it. I do want him and Cat playing the majority of the minutes. I do want to get Wiggins out there. Probably about 35 minutes a game. See what we can do. And the rookie called for at about 32. And then finally, of course, can switch out, you know, with uh, Zhang at times. Or Bates can play a little bit of power forward. Actually, no. I'm going to switch out. I'm going to switch you out and give Jordan Bell some minutes right there. I know he can also play power forward too if needed. So, we're going to go with that. And yeah, man, that's the team. I mean, it's it's a nice looking squad. It's definitely a good start. So we're going to roll this system proficiency. We got a two-star defensive system with Ryan Saunders. Uh, yeah, definitely not a fan of that whatsoever. Um, seven seconds. We got that at about three and a half. So we got such a young, you know, quick athletic team. I think I'm going to rock with that for now. So we'll go with that. And yeah, man, not really too many other changes to make. I think Carl Anthony Towns definitely is in for even more of a breakout season than years past. Um, but I really want to see how this, like, really all four of these guys do together. And if it eventually comes down to it, I probably will trade Wiggins for a different type of piece that would fit a bit better on the team. But I don't know, man. I'm excited to see what this is all about. Let's go ahead and submit the season, see what we can do. Okay, so a record of 42 and 39. I mean, quite frankly, this could be a playoff team, guys. Like, maybe an eighth spot. But then again, the Western Conference is so damn deep. I could see them just blowing it and not being there, man. But they should. I'm going to say, I'm going to say probably, I'm going to say a seventh seed, guys. We got Giannis' MVP back-to-back -back for him. Zion Williamson, Rookie of the Year. Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, we got six-man. Giannis' defensive player, Jason Tatum, most improved. And Doc Rivers is Coach of the Year. Uh, All-NBA first, All-NBA second, and All-NBA third looking like this with Carl Anthony Towns on there at least. So him playing with D'Lo actually helped him out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, we are not in the playoffs. We're not in the playoffs this season. And that's been like, that just summarizes the Timberwolves franchise for literally like 20 years now man going back to when they had like Kevin Garnett just always so damn close you know what I'm saying and then Kevin Love so damn close Carl Anthony Towns so damn close we're gonna get through this video though there guys I promise you that man uh we got player stats on the season so we got D'Lo at 23 points two rebounds and nine assists one to two steals per game in his first season on the Minnesota Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, scoring went down a little bit, which is okay. Like, when you have, like, a dynamic score, like, D'Lo added to your roster, because, of course, he's going to score more than Jeff Teague does. At 21 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, fantastic numbers. Um, Andrew Wiggins, honestly, did not play bad at all. 18 points, 4 rebounds, you know, 3 assists, about 1 steal per game. But the thing I like is 49% field goal percentage. Like, that's some pretty damn good efficiency based off years past man he shot 40 percent from three so often about five attempts those are really good numbers now culver's three point shot only at 30 percent off six attempts not too happy about that but it is his rookie season so he can definitely get better than that uh bench unit did fine enough we got noah vonley at nine points seven rebounds about two assists per game so he did nice i love his rebounding guys i definitely just want to get more of a better like defensive guy right there but he definitely wasn't bad for us man uh we also got nasri now as a 75 overall player Okay, so we're going to go ahead and simulate the season. Um, as far as our draft pick goes, we do not have one. It went to the Golden State Warriors in the trade, so we don't have a draft pick for the next two seasons. I'm okay with that, man, but we're going to make some things happen. I think I just want to go to free agency and just like see like who the best defensive power forward is and go for him. Um, Pascal Siakam, if we were able... No, we don't got enough money for him, man. Not with Andrew Wiggins' contract, but I'm definitely going to test the trade market with Wiggins and we're going to kind of go from there I think I think that's probably our best bet now if we don't find something we absolutely love I'm not gonna yo Detroit Pistons in the finals really man I mean we lost but hey we still made it there guys uh James Harden we got finals MVP okay so staff signing I think our first point of emphasis as much as I like Ryan Saunders and Flip Saunders rest in peace one of my favorite coaches of all time um in the end of the day like, like this is a business and his defensive system does not fit the mold of this team. So for me to get to that next level, I definitely got to find a coach where it does fit a bit better. Um, so I like grit and grind. But I think just with some of the shooting on this, well, a lot of them are just balanced. We got perimeter centric. Definitely don't want to go with Fred Hoidberg, though. Uh, we got Jason Kidd. I mean, I wouldn't mind giving him another chance. You know, let's give Jason Kidd a chance at coach. We'll go, we'll go with that. Offer him up. He's thinking about it. He signs. Okay, we got Jay Kidd. And then as far as the trainer goes, I'm going to go with uh, Sean Lee with the B+. He signs up for right that. Okay, there we go. Now, NBA draft, like I said, guys, we don't have any draft picks. Um, so, or we might, but it's going to be like a second rounder. So, yeah, not going to focus on those. Rookie signings, we get Killian Tilly. 
I didn't mind me 610 face up for sure. Let's get him in. We also got Kellen Martin. Not going to sign him up. Just don't really see myself use him in this video. Team player options. We got uh, Josh Obeck, 77 overall. Kind of bait job getting him back. And then Jalen uh, Noel. Don't really need him at all. So we'll decline his option. Just I don't want to have too many roster spots on the team. You know what I'm saying? Uh, qualifying offers. Jordan Bell. We'll extend that. Beyond that, though, having Nas Reed on the team. Don't really think I need Jordan Bell all that much anyway. Um, but yeah, as predicted, money wise. We just don't have it. Now, Jermichael Green would be kind of cool. What's his defense like? D plus perimeter. So, he doesn't really fit that. Inside's not bad. Inside's definitely not bad. Okay, let me go to a trade finder first. Because it would be nice if we do trade Wiggins. If we could trade him before um, the actual, like, free agency. So, we got money freed up if the contract situation is nice for us. Am I able to go to all players? I cannot go to all players. Okay, so. I guess what we'll do is we will just go to Wiggins. And I will even toss in the future first. Why not? You know, why not, man? And see what this gets us. We got... To, oh, my God. That's... That would be nice. That would be nice. And then, of course, the 76ers. Because the bias is more of a four in the NBA anyway. So, that way, they would be able to go back and, uh, you know, just have a natural three out there with Wiggins. I like that trade already a ton right there, man. Chris Middleton. Okay. Team up Wiggins. The honest would be interesting. Uh, we got Otto Porter, not bad, only on a one-year deal. We got Darius Garland, don't need a point guard, Goran Hayward. Kyle Anderson, Justice Winslow, Terry Rozier. We got Bogdanovich, Bogdanovich again. Terrence Ross. Okay, okay, I mean, I, I like a lot of these trades here, man. Clay Thompson, <laughs> get our own Splash Bro situation. Because, yeah, I would put Tobias at the four spot, and then I could find myself a better three. Or I'd just go with Middleton at the three. Milton a bit cheaper, but I do know Tobias's numbers go up at that four spot. But yeah, he would fit nicely on the squad here, guys. I mean, like defensively doesn't exactly like give us everything we need. His rebounding is nice. Uh, low post defense. It's above the position average at least. On ball defense, 70 overall help defense. So yeah, he's not going to be exactly throwing shots back. But I think it just gives us more of a veteran and more consistency. I am going to do this trade right there. Now money wise, this will help us out a lot. Uh, it might allow Josh, um, Joshua, Joshua to start on the team now, but I'm going to do a trade of Dang, Jake Lehman, and I'm going to see if I can find a really good small forward now. Thaddeus Young, don't really want to play him at the three spot. I mean, I would. I definitely would. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I like any of these trades so far. Trevor Ariza, not really feeling that. Uh, OG Anobi and Stanley Johnson, not doing that. I mean, Thaddeus at the three spot, it would be interesting. It definitely would be interesting. Once again, let's look at his defense. Uh, rebounding is not great, so I would definitely want to put him at three spot. Pick and roll defense, 81. Low post, 79. On ball, 79. You know what? It might actually be like a match made in heaven right there. But yeah, I would go with Thaddeus at the three, and, and I would go with Tobias at the four. I think is what kind of what I'm getting at with that, that man. But uh, yeah, it definitely gives us like a nice veteran. And I think now we can compete for a championship, guys. I really do think we could do that. So let's see what the roster is looking like so far. We got our starting five all set. Josh is going to come off uh, the bench with Tob uh, Tomas, Nas Reed off the bench. I do want to go out there and get a backup center because Nas Reed could play, you know, the backup center too. But uh, we'll see what's available. We got Mason Plumley, $8 million, age 30. I got to imagine his range is going to go down a little bit. But, I mean, it's really not that bad. You know, $8 million for a quality backup center. I don't like him on Team USA all that much, but he'll be fine. Um, and I feel like him and Cat could possibly play together on the court. So, yeah, we'll go with him. And, yeah, let's get out of the uh, moratorium period here. Okay. So, for some point guards. Yeah, not a lot of great players left at this point. Yo, Noah Vonley, I'd love to get him back, actually, man. I'd love to get Noah Vonley back. Maybe even for, even for the backup small forward. But, uh, besides for that, man, we are pretty much good to go. I am going to go ahead and simulate to the beginning of the regular season. Do all my training camps. All that good stuff out there. Okay, so here is the team going into the season. Absolutely love our starting five. We got D'Lo at point guard. Jared Culver at the two. Thaddeus at the 3, Tobias at the 4, and Carl Anthony Towns at the 5. Offensively, defensively, playmaking, it's all in this lineup right here, guys. Uh, we got Mason Plumley for backup center. We got Josh O as shooting guard. Uh, Sonoransky backup uh, point guard. Then we got Noah Vonley at the backup power forward position. Unfortunately, I couldn't really find the minutes of the rotation to add Jordan Bell or Nas Reed. So, yeah, I'm not going to screw up with that too much, man. I love our bench unit, so I don't really see myself going out there and training for another bench player. Like, it should be good. Rotation's great. 
Uh, since the first season, we got the three and a half star balance system with Jason Kidd. That is not, Jason Kidd looks like he's been drinking again, man. Damn, bro. Um, but yeah, so we are now going to go ahead and simulate this second season. Expectations. I mean, I know this team has not made the playoffs, but honestly, man, I have championship expectations with this squad now. I really do. Like with the ratings and everything, I don't see why it couldn't happen. So let's go ahead, man, and see if we can get that done. A record of 62 and 19. I swear, Jason Kidd better get code to the year war because that is an absolutely just like increase from last NBA season. And this goes to show, man, just like the development of players and just like getting those locker room guys, how that can really affect just the dynamic and the chemistry of your team. Giannis with a third straight MVP, James Wiseman, rookie of the year, expensive didn't win he's six man, Giannis defensive player, Shea Gilligas most improved, and Jason Kidd coach of the year as appropriately should be. Uh, all NBA first, all NBA second, and all NBA third. The one thing I cannot wait for for 2K20 is that you are not going to see Zion Williamson all NBA first team his second damn season in the NBA. Um, but yeah, we got D'Lo and Carlton Towns both making the all NBA third team, so that's cool. And all the rookies right there, okay. Uh, we are the first seed in the Western Conference. T uh, definitely can win a championship this season. Player stats, we got D'Lo at 25 points, 9 assists per game. That's like top three point guard numbers right there, guys. Uh, we got Cat at 22 and 12 with four assists. Uh, we got Tobias at 19.6 rebounds, three assists per game. Culver was nice. Thaddeus Young was like the fifth option on this team. So all things considered, the 10 points per game, six rebounds, really nice numbers. Assists, playmaking out there was great. Uh, the defense was good. No complaints with that, man. Then our bench unit was really off the charts. Like everybody just went out there, played the role very nicely. Uh, meanwhile, I do want to see how, because what team, yeah, Andrew Wiggins, I think is on the uh, 76ers. So we'll see how we did over there now real quick. And yeah, we got, oh, they got signed Ingram too? Yo, Wiggins about to find himself on the bench, bro. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. They got Brandon Ingram on the team. Uh, but here we go. First round, we do have the Golden State Warriors. Let's see how this goes. Come on, man. It's championship or nothing. It's championship or nothing. It's not actually true because I think a lot of our guys are signed uh, for the foreseeable future. So yeah, we don't win it this season. We always got next season. Uh, but yeah, so we got D'Lo, 27 points, 11 assists in the closeout game, 20 for Tobias, 19 to 17 with four blocks for Carl Anthony Towns. Next up, we got the Utah Jazz, not really too afraid of them, although Rudy Gobert against Carl Anthony Towns, offense versus defense. Yeah, offense won this time, four games to zero. Uh, we got D'Lo, yo, he is just D'Loading, man, ice in his veins, 32 points, six assists, 27 and 16 for Carl Anthony Towns. Donovan Mitchell at 25, 20, and 12 for Rudy Gobert. Next up, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, the Los Angeles Lakers. Simulate current round. Got game one. Got game two. We just built a freaking ghost squad here, man. Oh, my God. Oh, 3-1? Come on, guys. Four games to one. We got the seventh seed, Boston Celtics. Behind, uh, what, we got 30, 10, and 5 for Tobias. 27 for Culver and 10 assists. This is what I knew he was capable of, man. I was waiting for it out there. I was definitely waiting for it. But here we go, Boston Celtics. Uh, they got Kemba Ennis. They got pretty much the same exact team out there. So we'll see how this goes. Simulate current round. Got game one. Got game two. Got game three. Guys, in only two seasons, we built one of the best teams. Actually, the best team in the NBA right here. Um, we got Colton Towns, as appropriately should, once again. Uh, again, that finals MVP at 23 points, 13 assists. I'm sorry, 13 rebounds, 4 assists per game. But it really was D'Lo that came on this team. Made the big difference. And I really do think we can see results like this if those two ever decide to team up, especially if uh, Jared Culver ends up becoming what I think he could be here in the NBA, guys. But yeah, man, playoff stats, just so you guys can see this, absolutely amazing. One of my better rebuilds, I will say that. Like, usually, it, like, three, four seasons it takes me to really get to the places I want to be. Um, but no, I just, I, I knew we had the core. It was all about getting that three and that four spot, which we did. You know, guys with consistency, the veterans, and then, of course, kind of juicing up the bench a little bit man but yeah i really enjoyed this rebuild um really looking forward to nba 2k20 guys tomorrow i do have a rebuild battle coming out against crushables um great my league youtuber so he also makes my thumbnails too guys he also makes my thumbnails for me too uh so we are gonna be doing a rebuild battle i believe the new orleans pelicans so stay tuned for that thank you all so much for watching be sure to check out my second channel extra crispy and peace out